my name is Courtney DeKalb Myers. I am the Cleveland County Horticulture Educator and today I'm here at the Central Library with the Pioneer Library System talking about native plants, some of their benefits, and some of the ways that we can design with them and utilize them within our landscape. So when thinking about native plants, we really have to define nativity. Uh, when it comes to defining nativeness within our plants, we really have to think about our local ecosystem. And so the ecosystem is going to consist of animals, plants, the microorganisms within the soil, also the climate conditions, and also the soil conditions. And so those environments can be very specific. So there are a lot of different eco regions within Oklahoma, and we have many options when it comes to native plants. Cleveland County and Norman actually kind of sit on the cusp of two different ecosystems, the cross timbers and the great central plains. And so we kind of have a good mix of different native plants that we can use depending on the climate conditions of your landscape. But of course, consider that if they're dry, if you have a lot of shade, that can really determine the different type of plants that you might use within your landscape. So there are a lot of different benefits of native plants. First is that they serve as a great habitat and food source for pollinators. So if we use native plants within our landscape, that can really give a place for those pollinators and those insects to go, a place for them to lay their eggs, to hatch, to chew on different plants, and begin to hatch into those beautiful butterflies. So monarch butterflies are migratory, and they spend their summers up in the Midwest, and then they go down to Mexico in the wintertime. And so we'll oftentimes see monarch butterflies in the spring and the fall here in Oklahoma as they make their migratory journey back and forth. And so we kind of have a duty as Oklahomans to include a little hotel or a little rest stop for those monarch butterflies in our landscape. One of the best things that you can plant for monarch butterflies are milkweed. There are a lot of different species of milkweed available. Uh, in the garden centers and so consider sort of the climactic conditions you have and what species of milkweed might be good uh, But please consider using some of those if you want to have something for the monarch butterflies Another benefit of native plants is providing food and habitat for wildlife And so you might see insects on your plants insects on your landscaping plants and you might think hmm good or bad What should I do? Uh, well, you know two those insects serve as a food source for birds and different wildlife within your landscape. And so not always are those insects bad or an indicator that something bad is going on because they're playing a role in the ecosystem. The plants feed those insects and then those insects feed the birds. And so if you're looking to landscape for birds, try to plant things that will bring some food in for those birds. Uh, primarily anything that will bring in those insect populations to feed the birds, but also including things that might have nuts or berries to again feed native populations of birds. You might also consider having a nice evergreen shrub to give them some shelter or a bird bath to provide them some water. Those can be all great ways to bring native birds into your landscape. Another benefit of native plants is that they're better adapted to our landscape. And so that means less water, less fertilizer, less inputs on our part in order to have successful and beautiful plants. They're native to our region and they're native to our area. And so we don't have to kind of help them out or sort of manipulate them as much to be happy. Native plants have really deep root systems and I will show you that right here. So if you want to design a native garden, I've got a couple tips and tricks for you. First is to start small. If you kind of know the benefits of native plants, you might be very motivated, you might want to pull out everything you have in your garden already, but that can be very overwhelming. And so start small, maybe consider one portion of your landscape, one corner of your yard, and maybe consider that to be the native part of your yard. Do that and then continue to work around in your landscape because a little bit is better than nothing. A lot of times too, our landscapes are inherited. We might have purchased a home or we might I've had some plants included with the house when we built the home. And so we don't necessarily need to pull out everything right away. Just start small, uh, take inventory of what you have, what you like, and then plant in and around that with native plants. It's also important to have lots and lots of patience. And so sometimes it can take a couple years for some of those native perennials to get going and to really show off their beauty and show off their color. Uh, and so try to have patience with them uh, as they become established and as they begin to grow in your landscape. Another thing to consider is that diversity is key. And so if, especially if we're planting for pollinators, they need something to 
feed on all the time. And so consider blooming times of your plants. And so having lots and lots of different plants, they might have lots and lots of different bloom times, and that'll kind of give you a full coverage bloom time for those pollinators. Also, if we have a particularly wild year and maybe the environmental conditions are a little crazy, that can happen in Oklahoma sometimes, particularly this winter, um, you might have some plants that are better adapted to that than others. And so it's kind of a not putting all your eggs in one basket sort of situation that you can have, uh, but you'll still have some that are resilient and that might be better adapted to those conditions. It's also important to be aware of public safety issues and so try to make sure that your native plants aren't blocking sidewalks or right of ways or anything like that. Just because it's a wildlife promoting garden doesn't necessarily mean it has to look wild. So just be aware of those public safety issues as well. It can also be a good idea to use borders or buffers around your native landscape. That can really help the turf from getting into your landscape and kind of gives you a weed free zone to control. Uh, so try to use borders or anything like that to sort of separate or uh, demarcate your lawn versus your native garden. It's also a good idea to use curvy lines within your landscape designing because native gardens are going to tend to be more organic, more informal. And so using sort of curvy lines or wavy lines within the landscape makes the garden feel a little bit more natural. Also consider adding some human elements to your native garden. So things like pathways or bird baths or art and sculpture can all be ways to add your own little touch to making that garden uh, a, a fun place to be and a fun place to hang out. Some native plants are very tall, and so try to put those towards the back. That way you have those as sort of a border and then continue to stair step the heights of those plants down to the edge of that garden. Some plants will also reseed, and so try to give those plants room to spread. And so you can plant one one year, and though it might be an annual, it might die out at the end of the season, its seed will come back the following year and be perennially present within your garden. Unless your soil is really, really bad, typically fertilizer amendments are not gonna be necessary. You can always do a soil test to check the amendments within your soil, um, but generally when you're using native plants, they're not going to need the same amount of amendments as some of the other plants within your landscape. They're better adapted to those existing soil conditions. Also, don't fear the hungry, hungry caterpillars. You might see insects eating and chewing on your different plants, but that's just part of the ecosystem. That's part, that's them there doing their job. Uh, and so especially if you're trying to promote pollinators or butterflies or anything like that, you know, let them chew on your plants. Those plants will come back. They're used to that, they're adapted to that. Uh, and let them be a host source for some of those insects. Also be very judicial with your pesticides. Uh, really try to avoid anything that's broad spectrum and even some organic pesticides might have an impact on caterpillars. Uh, so be aware of that as well. Also try to be neighborly. Just because you're enthusiastic about native plants doesn't mean your neighbors necessarily have to be. Change doesn't happen overnight. And so using those native plants within your landscape, try to make it beautiful and lovely so that everybody else wants to do it as well. Now you're probably wondering, what do I plant? Where can I go? What can I do? So just a quick consideration, when you go to the store and you purchase wildflower packets, those wildflower packets might not necessarily be wildflowers in Oklahoma. And so a lot of times the wildflower packets, the number one seed that they have in them are California poppies. I'll give you a hint, California poppies are not native to Oklahoma. And so try to do some research, try to look up some of the plants that do well in Oklahoma. Some of the resources that you can go and look for different native plants are gonna be Okies for Monarchs. They primarily focus on monarch plants, but still a great resource and a great place to go and look up plants that are native to Oklahoma that will serve our monarch populations. And they're very specific on their website. You can find uh, plants that are native to the eastern, the central, and the western part of Oklahoma. So kind of specific and regional in that respect. Also check out the Xerce Society for Invertebrate Conservation. They also have lists of native plants that serve insect populations and invertebrate populations. If you're particularly interested in birds, you can go to audubon.com and put in your zip code and it will give you a list of native plants that serve different bird populations within your area. And you can also check out the Missouri Botanical Garden website. They also have a great database of all sorts of landscaping plants, but they can also kind of list native plants to different regions within the United States. 
So hopefully you've learned a little bit about native plants and some of the benefits of native plants. Uh, and hopefully you're encouraged to include some of these in your landscape to serve the monarchs or to serve the different insects and wildlife populations within your landscape.